In my last video, I showed you an amazing device to bring your old VHS and Hi8 camcorders back to life. Whether you want to digitize your memories or upgrade these retro gems to record directly onto an SD card, no tapes needed. This little gadget made it possible, but what if it could be even better? I'm talking about the Unishin UR2308, a device that costs around $70 on AliExpress. It offers solid video quality and excellent audio. Audio test, one, two, three, four. Actually, I found this device while searching for an alternative to the Mini DVR, which I love it but has terrible audio quality. Unlike the Mini DVR, the Unishin has built-in screen and more advanced features. If you want the full review and comparison between the two, I'll leave the link in the description. But for me, the Unishin is great but has one big problem. It doesn't have a built-in battery and the RCA connectors take up way too much space for my liking. I know there's a Unishin version with the battery bracket, but it's more expensive and bulkier. I wanted the lightest setup possible, and honestly, I really enjoy the modding process. It's a fun challenge, and maybe it will help someone with the same version. In this video, we're going to fix that, and take it even further with a few mods that will make it more portable and convenient. Now, I'm not an expert, so if I can do it, and you're into this kind of stuff, I'm pretty sure anyone can. Here's a quick breakdown of what I'll be doing in this video, along with timestamps in case you want to jump straight to a specific section. Number 1. Materials. I'll leave links in the description. I don't sell or get anything from this, but in case you need it. Number 2. Installing a 3.5mm AV input, a more compact connector that lets me use a small cable instead of bulky RCA cables. Number 3. Adding a power button and USB-C extender for easier charging access. Number 4. Installing a USB-C charging model to power the new battery. Number 5. Adding a rechargeable battery to make it fully portable. Number 6. Mounting a cool shoe adapter so it can be attached to a monitor mount or a one quarter thread. Number 7. Battery protection and screen glass protector for extra durability. Number 8. Finding a case for it, because you gotta keep it safe, right? And number 9. Final setup and testing. Let's see how it performs with different cameras and setups. But before continuing, if you're enjoying this video so far, I really appreciate your support. Please drop a like, leave a comment, anything, even an emoji helps, and subscribe to the channel. This way, you help YouTube recommend my video and keep the channel growing. Thanks a lot. Let's start with the mod. First, we need to remove these small rubber covers hiding the screws. There are four, one in each corner. We just need to take out the screws with a screwdriver to open the case. Now we need to carefully unplug this small connector, it is for the speaker. The first thing I'll do is install the 3.5mm AB input. To do that, I need to access to the RCI input solder points, which are on the other side of the board. So I'll have to disconnect the monitor's flex cable. This is the most delicate part so I need to be extra careful. The board is secured with four screws, so we need to remove them. Now we can remove the port completely to solder where we need to. The other part contains the Unishin buttons on the screen, we'll set that aside for now. Flipping the board over we'll find the solder points for the RCA connectors, all I'm going to do is solder wires to each of these points, video, left audio, right audio, and ground, then connect them to a 3.5mm jack. Basically, we are hacking the AB input. To make this easier to understand, I'm going to draw a diagram, or whatever this ends up being, showing which solder point corresponds to each signal, and how they should be wired to the 3.5mm jack. This way, it follows the standard wiring for retro cameras. 
and here's the final diagram. Now, I just need to solder each wire as shown in the image. The top points represent the RCA video input on the Unigine, while the bottom points correspond to each pin on the 3.5mm jack. Feel free to pause the video or ask for the diagram in the comments if you need it. Now I have 4 wires soldered onto the Unichin's board, ready to connect to the 3.5mm jack. But first, I will clean off any flux residue and arrange the wires properly to make sure everything fits neatly inside the shell. Before moving on, I followed the power input traces and found two easily accessible points where I can fit the 5 volts the Unichin needs, along with the ground point. That means I could connect the battery here and make it run without being plugged in. My original plan was to tap into the USB-C connector directly, but those solder points are much smaller and harder to work with. To make sure these new points were safe, I used my multimeter to measure the input voltage while the Unichin was plugged in, and sure enough, they matched. So I decided to take advantage of this and solder the wires now, which I will use later to install the battery. The next step was finding a spot inside the casing to drill a hole for the 3.5mm jack. After a lot of deliberation, I think this is the best place for it. There's not much room for error, so I will have to be very precise when drilling. And there you go, it fits perfectly. Well, almost. When I closed the case, it didn't fit perfectly, so I had to remove a bit of plastic here. Now it closes smoothly without any force. But before soldering the 3.5mm jack, and since I already made a mess and have my drill ready, I decided to go ahead and make holes for the power switch and the USB-C extension. This extension will be wired to the charging module for the battery. The goal is to avoid opening the device every time I need to charge it. While the model itself already has a USB-C port, its shape doesn't fit well in the available space, so this extension cable is the perfect solution for that. And this is how the hole for the power switch turned out. It looks great. Now I can finally put everything back in the case and solder the 3.5mm jack. Before that I'll prep all the wires, sliding a small piece of heat shrink tubing onto each one to protect the solder joints once they're in place. I will also add the nut that will secure the connector. I run all the wires through the hole and following the diagram, start soldering each of the four wires. And done! Before securing everything with the heat shrink tubing and the nut, it's time for the first test to make sure everything is working. I plug the Unichin into power and connect my beloved camera Sony PC5 using a 3.5mm cable to see what happens and… Awesome! We've got video! I tested the audio afterward and it worked perfectly too. Now that everything is working, I can confidently heat the shrink tubing and secure the connector with the nut. It looks great. The next step is setting up this module, which will allow us to charge the battery and step up the voltage to 5 volts the Unichin needs. Most lithium batteries, like the one I'm using, output 3.5 volts to allow to power the Unichin. This module fixed that by boosting the voltage to 5 volts. How does it work? It has a small adjustment screw that let us increase or decrease the output voltage. To do this, I'll connect the battery to the input pins and connect a multimeter on the output pins. As I turn the screw, I can watch the voltage change on the multimeter display. I just need to adjust it until it reaches 5 volts. Bolts. And done! Now I'm going to connect the USB-C extension cable to the dedicated pins on the module. I'm using this extension because there wasn't enough space to fit the built-in USB-C port. This way, I can make better use of the available space. Remember the wires we soldered to the Unichin's power input pins back at the minute 606? Now we're going to connect them to the model's output pins. This way, the Unichin will be powered by the battery or through the USB-C port. Let's do a test. I will plug in the USB-C cable. 
it should power on. And yes, it's working. After testing different spots, I will mount the module onto this metal plate. It fits best here. I will secure it with double-sided tape, which will not only hold it in place, but also help prevent short circuits. The next step is installing the battery. After a lot of deliberation, I decided to mount it externally. My original plan was to place it inside, but that would have required a lower capacity battery. Through different tests, I found that a 2000 mA battery keeps around 2 hours of runtime, but it's too big to fit inside. I did the same thing with the $9 monitor I modified for the mini DVR. I leave the link in the description if you want to check it out, and I think it's a good balance between size and battery life. So I decided to mount it here, and made a hole in the casing to route the wires. To keep it in place, I will use double sided tape. This thing is super strong, so no worries, the battery isn't going anywhere. Now, the final step is soldering the battery wires and the power switch. I will solder the negative wire to the module's negative input pin, then connect the battery's positive wire to one of the switch's wires. The remaining switch wire will go to the module's positive terminal. This way, we complete the circuit and can turn the device on and off. Now that everything is in place, we can finally close it up. Just don't forget to reconnect the screen and speaker. Before screwing everything back together, let's do a final test. Press the button and... Awesome, it works! Now let's screw everything back together. We also put the rubber screws covers back in place. Now the Unishin works perfectly on battery power without losing the functionality of its original USB port. You can still use it to power the device, connect it to a PC as a capture card or transfer files. However, to charge the battery, you will need to use the USB-C port we installed. To make the device more versatile in any setup, I decided to install this cold shoe mount, which also has a standard one quarter thread, perfect for tripods. This way, I can easily mount it wherever I need. However, the device is quite thick, so I decided to carve a small groove right here with my drill. This allows the mount to sit flush and be securely attached. Now I can attach this small monitor mount and place it on any tripod or mount it on any camera with a flat shoe, just like an external monitor. To protect the battery, I'm using some extra strong Gorilla tape. I've used this tape in other projects, and it's incredibly durable, it never peels off. Someone suggested making a custom 3D printed case for the battery, and while that might offer more protection, this tape is a much affordable solution and does the job perfectly. Plus, if you take care of your gear, you really don't need anything else. It's the same tape I used to cover the battery on the first monitor I modified over a year ago, and it's still holding up perfectly. Now to add extra protection to the screen, and honestly it's just an excuse to use a leftover screen protector from my Sony A6400, I decided to apply it to the Unishin's monitor. It's almost the same size, but good enough to keep the screen safe from scratches. And finally, I have to confess, I'm a bit obsessed with having a case for everything. I just can't stand having my gear scattered in a drawer. So I found this case on AliExpress for just $3, and it fits perfectly, even with the charging cable and the monitor mount inside. And that's it, the mod is officially complete. Right now, you're seeing different ways I've mounted this device on different cameras, as you can see, we now have a much more compact setup, using just a small 3.5mm cable and a rechargeable battery. I know this might seem a bit excessive or unnecessary to some, but I really wanted the most portable setup possible. Honestly, 
This mod is for people like me who enjoy overcomplicating things, fixing or sometimes ruining devices just for fun. Of course, the Unishin work just fine with a power bank and RCA cables, but that setup is bulkier. Or if you don't mind spending a bit more, there's also a version with the battery bracket. But let's be real, that's not as fun as experimenting and modding. I hope you enjoyed this video, thank you so much for staying until the end. Don't forget to leave a like, drop a comment and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.